Hey everyone, it's Neil Patel here for another Q&A Thursday video. I'm here with Adam LaDolce from Viewership. Hello everybody. And this week's question is... This one's from Jason Valasek. And I think we've seen a couple other questions from him in the past, so thank you, Jason. And if you wanna be featured like this, leave a comment right there below with your question, we'll answer it. So, uh, he's basically, he's dying to hear our thoughts on what uh, compensation structure looks like for commission salespeople versus task-oriented people, and how to blend in 1099 contractors. Sure, so with commission-based salespeople, typically the best salespeople are the ones who get a base. Yes, you can do commission only. If you're in the United States, you can find a ton of amazing commission-only salespeople mm. based out of Utah. As they say, if you can sell religion, you can sell anything. That's what the saying goes in sales. And that's why you're seeing a lot of companies go to Utah to run their sales team, from like the Adobe's of the world to the sales forces of the world. I didn't come up with that saying. That's just what I learned from some of these guys. Um, and that's what they told me, like, Utah's one of the best places to go find amazing sales Because they're Mormons, right? They're Mormon, they'll, they'll go, go door, door to door. door. Yeah. And they do it for free. Yeah. Right? Because they're believing in the cause. So if you can find some of those hungry people to sell your products or services, the chances are because they have amazing work ethic, they'll do well too. But what I found in general is if you pay your salespeople a base, they're much better off than if you only paid them commission only. Mm -hmm. So look for salespeople that are experienced, they're hungry, not too experienced, and when you look at their base plus commission, in general, when you look at your whole sales department, because there's other costs, there's a VP of sales, there may be a, market, a sales director, you may have some of your fulfillment people or other people within the organization having to help the salespeople close some deals. In general, whatever you're closing in revenue, sales should not cost you more than 10%. If it starts costing you more than that, it's just gonna eat away a lot of your margins, which means you won't be able to provide amazing results or invest as much in products or services. I have a question, just 10% of lifetime value of the customer or 10% of initial deal? We look at it as 10% of the first year's deal. I see. Um, right. Venture funded companies are a bit more flexible. I've seen some of yeah, them go right. up to like 20, 30%. I'm talking for all of you guys who are bootstrapping and trying to make it right. out yourself because you need to have a self-sustaining business model that works well. For example, if you look at Domo right now, they went public. Their stock got hammered. A company that once had a billion plus valuation, if I'm not mistaken, and at least based on the day from when I'm recording the video, they're worth in the hundreds of millions of dollars. Why is their valuation down? Their expenses are too high. You're in business, whether you like it or not, to also make a profit. And I'm not saying you shouldn't pay people well, because you have to keep in mind, without the people on your team, you will not have your business. You, the people on your team will determine how good or big of a company you build. Elon Musk doesn't build Tesla, it's all the people around him. Yes, he's smart, but it's the team that has helped him get to where he is more than just himself, right? right? And I learned that from Richard Branson. We were speaking at a conference together and he's like, it's all about your team. You're not gonna build anything big without an amazing team. Yeah. So pay him well. That's why I recommend you don't do commission only. You pay him a base, they're much higher quality sales reps, and in general, your total compensation for your whole sales department should be around 10%. Um, if it's lower than that, increase it, treat them right. If it's higher than that, you need to figure things out because you need to invest in product, support, engineering, mm -hmm. software, what other, other divisions you have and still have a healthy profit margin so you can take that money, provide amazing perks to your team members. And of course, you can also use that cash to expand more, dump it into marketing and grow. Right. So that's how I look at sales. Um, as it comes to other tasks, I don't really look at it as, hey, here's how I pay my contractors, Here, here's how much it should be. I look at it as like, all right, let me go to sites like Upwork. I know a lot of people say Upwork sucks. It's because most people hire Upwork just based on not, they don't have enough uh, completed jobs, they don't look at their success ratio, they're not looking at all the reviews, they're not talking to them and pre-screening them and being picky enough. It's not about just getting the cheapest people on Upwork, it's about getting the people who are qualified and you're getting a good bang for your buck, so you need to look at quality and price and have some sort of balance there. Um, and just make sure that whatever you're paying, it's worth it for you. And then after a while, it may get so expensive, you're like, wait, if I just hired someone full time, it would be cheaper. And that's when you need to start moving people into you know, being in-house within your office versus just being virtual and contractors. Definitely.
And just one note I've seen with hiring contractors and hiring employees is it's less necessarily about the money because the psychology of money is more so, yes, people are happy if they're make, they're not happy if they're not making enough money. But once they make a certain amount of money, more money doesn't necessarily, necessarily make them more motivated, right? So you can actually sometimes overpay people to an extent where it doesn't even motivate them to do more. People more so want to feel like they're a part of something, a part of the organization. Neil has talked a lot about passion the past couple of days, and I've got a lot out of that. He said, right? Hire yeah. people who are passionate, who are excited about what you're doing, and that's what really matters. So I just wanted to kind of like chime in on that, that point because I thought that that was a big idea that I took from this week. And, and I can't take credit for that. That came from Steve Jobs. He always said, when you're hiring people, it's not about hiring people who have the best resume. It's about hiring people who are hustlers, like people who just hustle hard and get stuff done right. and are passionate because if someone's passionate, they're willing to put in the time, the energy, the hours, whatever it takes to succeed and accomplish their goals. And they'll be there for the long haul versus someone who's just going to keep hopping around every you know, six months or every year looking for a new job. So that's it for this week's Q&A Thursday video. Thank you guys for watching. If you have a question, leave a comment below. We may answer it next week. Either way, I'll respond to it and answer it. Again, thank you. Make sure you subscribe, like, share, comment, tell other people about the video. Appreciate you guys watching.